Thank you. Uh, I'm Aparna Sena, product manager for Kubernetes at Google. You know, prior to Google, um, I worked on a software monolith. It kind of looks like the cinnamon donut, actually. Uh, but uh, this was at an enterprise company, and it wasn't as large as the Urulu. This is the largest monolith uh, in the world, in Australia. Uh, but we did have a lot of technical debt, and we were in the process of rewriting our code to be more modular, and we nearly risked our business doing that. So when I came to Google, it was like coming to another universe. With Borg, developers didn't worry about adding machines or doing upgrades, and the operations team made a lot of improvements and innovations in the background. The constraints of the Borg infrastructure ensured that applications were scalable, efficient, and globally available. There were a couple of papers published by Google explaining how they did this, but it was still really pretty alien for the rest of the world. That is until there was a seed sown on GitHub. And over the last six releases, that seed has really matured to, as you heard, 900 contributors, 35,000 commits, to be one of the most active projects. And largely, this is due to the community that evolved around it. And this community really refined the plugin model for networking, for storage, enabled deployments on OpenStack and on on-premise and other cloud providers, and really built commercially supported offerings for real-world deployment. So that's great, but there are still a set of engineering concerns that linger, and I think many of you might have these questions. Does Kubernetes scale up? Is it too heavy? Is it hard to install? Is it only for stateless apps? So in true election style, let's do a fact check against the progress on these. Can it scale up? So we define cluster scale using an API latency and pod startup time metric. It started with 100 nodes, which is very humble, but in July of this year, Kubernetes scaled up to 2,000 nodes per cluster. And very soon after that, we had Pokemon Go really go global with their service using Kubernetes on Google Cloud. And we are on track to demonstrate even higher node counts in the next couple of releases. So maximum scale is great, but really auto-scaling up and down at the pod level and also at the cluster and node level is really what enables the separation of concerns between app developers and operations. And lastly, federation completes the, that scale-up story by allowing services to span multiple clusters. So I think this one is a check. But what about scaling down? So is Kubernetes too heavy for smaller sites? You know, a couple of weeks ago, you might have seen that Walmart announced the use of Kubernetes in mini data centers at their logistics warehouses. These are really small deployments. Uh, and they're running Kubernetes on traditional VMware and vSphere boxes. Really very impressive. OK, so if it scales up and scales down, is it too complex to use and install? Well, a lot of folks in the community are working on the day one install experience. SIG Lifecycle has introduced kubeadm with just two command installation. Kops has been making it simpler on AWS. And kubectl run and compose uh, make it easy to deploy your services. And lastly, Minikube makes the local installation experience for testing much easier. Day two was arguably not that bad with deployments and upgrades and also auto-scaling. But uh, the dashboard UI has been significantly improved, as you saw in the last demo. Uh, our docs are still a work in progress. So overall, I would say this whole area is a work in progress. The next question is, when can I use Kubernetes for stateful and batch workloads? There's really significant effort and progress in this area, and users are doing this today. So this is a satellite picture of US cornfields. Descartes Labs uses jobs and machine learning in Kubernetes to analyze these images and improve crop yield. Another example, Comcast recently used Stateful Set and contributed their work back for the YARN implementation. Also, native Spark support is on the way. So I would say this area is a very fast work in progress. Stateful Set is moving to beta, and we are regularly adding support for stateful applications through curated Helm charts. So sometimes people still question whether Kubernetes is optimized for Google's cloud. 
While it's true that Google Container Engine deploys the latest release of Kubernetes within days, it actually does so using pure upstream without any modifications. And you already saw earlier that the majority of contributions to Kubernetes are, come from outside of Google. And in fact, 11 of the talks at this conference are from users who are using it on-premise or in hybrid deployments. Google and the community continue to really invest in federation and in extensibility to make sure that there's user choice. In fact, sometimes there are projects that even we're not aware of that use that extensibility. Did you know that Cansible is a project that enables you to use Kubernetes to orchestrate non-containers? Please look them up. Lastly, I would say the most important piece is the managed service provider program that Dan Cohen announced today. That'll really make support and partners available to enterprises everywhere. With that, I think that we may even be ready for the world's largest monolith. Thank you.